Well, let's have a look at what uh, we're doing here. We can see we've got the upper ball joint loose and uh, you always get this question people say well how do you get the ball joints apart you know there's those splitter tools but they pretty much end up destroying at least the rubber boot if not the whole ball joint so here's a little trick the idea is you want something solid to put impact against and when you're just going against the suspension it's a whole lot harder for the impact that you can deliver to do the job. So let's have a quick look here. What we've done, and thank you to the good sunlight coming through my garage windows at this moment, we can take something like this open end wrench. This happens to be the right length. And if we're careful, we can finagle it into here against the lower arm. And then we've got a jack here positioned to the floor, just a straight old screw jack. I think I've got a couple of these. I think I found them in old international um, those little four bys in junkyards years and years ago. But you can use anything. You can use a stick. You can use some kind of a wedge. But what we're going to do is we've got this thing positioned through the suspension. Let's just dial it up a little bit. We're compressing the upper suspension a tiny bit. Enough for us to hopefully a little bit more we don't want to lift it off the jack or have it spit out. See, we can just drop that in there. And then we can see as we lower the jack, we're going to form, oh, it's twisting to the floor here. Let's get it, let's increase our leverage. Hang on, we're going to have to put the camera down. We need both hands. Yeah, let's take a look here. So basically, with the jack gone now, you can see how this wrench has made a very solid link between the lower arm, allowing our spindle to kind of float around. So now if we can deliver a nice impact to the lower bolt, we have this solid steel you know, you know, metal wrench making this a very solid block so that when we smack on there it should dislodge it with more success than just wailing on it against the suspension spring. In this case if we take our little and that was a five dollar garage sale purchase maybe ten or more years ago but some sort of little impact hammer in this case works. Let me see if I can lock myself in here. We've got the nut loose, but the nut's still on there. And with this solid backing, the hope is, I need to use both hands here because the spring's... That didn't take much at all. Because this is a very, very solid, hard, heavy, Let's take a look. So now in our little reshimming of the ball joints, I'm going to remove my brace here. Get my solid block out of the way. And in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to reattach the upper ball joint. So that we don't have the, uh, the hub here completely free floating. We still have the axle connected and you really don't want to allow the hub to go too far away because you'll probably separate the axle or the inner CV. The balls and all the uh, cage will come apart. So you would really want to pay attention to a lot of not letting the axle flop out if you don't want to do that service right now. So let me get rid of the other jack holding things up. I'm going to position the upper ball joint, bring the spindle back over, lift it into place. A little bit of wobbling and we can see the shaft right there. And now we'll 
have an easier time dealing with the lower one, with the upper one holding things steady. All right, we should be driving this thing shortly with an improved, tightened up, finalized front suspension.